The problem with reviewing TVs is that sometimes you get a TV that's so deeply enjoyable to watch that you kind of, you know, forget that you're supposed to be working and end up just watching TV for a bunch of hours. That's what happened to me yesterday. Not exactly productive, but I think it says a lot about this TV. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is my review of the LG G2 OLED TV. It's LG's best 4K OLED TV. It's in contention for the best TV of 2022 and yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and blame the G2 here for my not entirely productive work time. I mean, it was time well spent and it was work related, but truth be told, I got everything I needed for this review like days ago. I just made the happy mistake of turning on the TV while writing and well, the next thing I know, I had blasted through two movies and barely written anything. I'm okay with it though because I think it makes a fine intro to this review. See, there's no question that this TV's picture quality is straight up amazeballs, but that doesn't mean it's the right TV for you. So let's talk about what's good, great, even stupendous. And let's also talk about what makes this TV not the best candidate for everyone. And in the end, I hope you'll know whether it might be right for you. Before I dig into it, I just wanted to say thank you for pushing us past 946,000 subscribers. And if you aren't part of that 946K, well then you can help us reach a million by subscribing now. And as a benefit, you'll catch all of our great tech reviews as they come out. Thanks in advance for helping us grow. Okay, story time. The list of the LG G2's admirable attributes is long. It's got four HDMI 2.1 inputs. It looks stunning mounted on the wall with the included no gap wall mount. And it is indeed LG's brightest OLED TV to date thanks to LG's OLED Evo technology, which is a blend of hardware and software efforts. And in the case of the G2 here, happens to include a heat sink in the panel to allow the TV to reach those high brightness levels while also lowering risk of permanent image retention, AKA burn-in. As an OLED TV, it offers pitch black black levels, which set the foundation for eye-popping contrast. And LG's processing has also gotten really, really strong lately, which makes for solid motion, minimal noise and artifacts, and really smart use of its peak brightness. In other words, the G2 doesn't just get bright for brightness sake, although you can make it do that if you want to, but in the most accurate picture modes, it resolves bright highlight detail in a way that is reminiscent of Sony TVs. If the idea is to deliver on creative intent, then LG is very much standing toe to toe with Sony in that regard, even if that isn't one of its primary marketing lines. As far as bells and whistles go, the G2 is loaded with them. Voice control, automatic source detection, smart home integration, and more gamer friendly features than any other brand. That includes NVIDIA G-Sync, AMD FreeSync, and generic variable refresh rate support, which along with those four HDMI 2.1 inputs, low input gaming lag, and a gaming dashboard, makes for a very attractive option to gamers who want it all, even if they aren't likely to use it all. My only real complaint about this TV is the stand mount option. This is something you purchase separately, and I don't like how it fits, feels, or works. Not a fan of the steep raked back angle here. I think LG might go so far as to suggest that if you want a stand mounted TV, then look at a C2. My problem with that philosophy is that the G2 is a brighter, higher performance TV, so someone may want it for more than just the slick wall mount design. There's one other factor that might be a negative for some people, but I'm gonna get to that in a moment. Now that I've covered some pros and cons, let's dive deeper into some of the performance metrics in a segment I've been calling Numbers for Knit Nerds. Can we put like some reverb on that or something? I feel like it should be this big thing. Numbers for Knit Nerds. <clears throat> anyway, if you aren't interested in hearing about the nitty gritty stuff, <laughs> I amuse myself sometimes. Well, you can skip right ahead to the picture quality takeaway by using the timecode link down in the description. So for my measurements, I'm more or less stuck to filmmaker mode for SDR and HDR, although I'm also a fan of the ISF bright and ISF dark modes. It's just that filmmaker mode has just about every little setting I pay attention to set up the way I'd want it to be without me digging deep into the menu. The motion smoothing, for instance, is already turned off. So in filmmaker mode for SDR, peak luminance was about 100. 
170 nits. Now, the TV can go much higher than that if you want it to, but remember, filmmaker mode is supposed to cap things out at the max brightness specced by SDR, and in this case, it did just that. Now, if you were to go into the expert picture mode and set peak brightness to high and the OLED light setting to max, you could be getting up to 450 nits of practical brightness and about 190 nits full field white, which is impressive. Now, peak brightness in HDR is what really gives us a sense of just how bright this TV can get. And in HDR, this was before any adjustments, so just out of box HDR filmmaker mode, I got about 980 nits peak from a 2% all the way up to a 10% window and about 190 nits full field again. Now, when I went into HDR cinema mode and maxed everything out, the TV pushed just past the 1000 nit mark. So by the numbers, that makes the white light output of this TV the highest we've seen from any OLED based display. Does that, however, make it the brightest OLED TV ever? Not exactly. The real advantage to Quantum Dot OLED or QD OLED technology, the kind that we see in the Samsung S95B and Sony A95K over the WRGB OLED tech that's used in the G2 here is in the color brightness. And if we measure six key colors, red, green, blue, yellow, magenta, and cyan, what we find is that the G2 comes in shy of QD OLED by anywhere from one half to one third as bright. And the most notable differences in color brightness are seen in how bright red, yellow, and green can get. Now, I'm gonna stop there with the comparisons to QD OLED because I'm saving that for my comparison videos, but it's important to bring up because we can't just call the G2 the brightest OLED ever. Brightest in some ways, yes, but not in others. With that said, the LG G2 measured impeccably across the board. Right out of the box, in filmmaker mode, this unit was already dangerously close to offering an accurate D65 white point. I was able to get it just a bit closer to like Nirvana with a little tweaking in SDR and HDR, but its errors like right out of the box were already well below the threshold of human visibility before I even started tinkering. Colors did benefit a little from the calibration though, like out of the box, green and aquamarine colors did venture into visible error territory, but I mean, barely. In other words, sure, the TV can be made technically better with the calibration, but huh, I mean, that's a hard sell in my opinion because the out-of-box performance is just so good. So the TV measures extremely well, one of LG's best, if not the best. Does it watch equally as well? Oh man, yes, yes it does. Folks, this TV is gorgeous to watch, full stop. That's why I got distracted yesterday and just ended up re-watching movies I've already seen like 10 times. It was fun to watch them again on the G2 because the picture quality is just so fun and enjoyable. It's really a spectacle and I enjoyed almost every single minute of it. Yeah, because it is an OLED with instantaneous pixel response time, you will see a bit of stutter, kind of a flashing effect during slow pans in 24 frame per second content, so like most movies. That's just how it is if you don't enable motion smoothing. But other than that, I just spent my entire time with this TV gushing to myself over the deep, rich picture quality. At no time did I spend any time thinking the color brightness could have been higher. Now that's probably because I've got limited time watching QD OLEDs at this point, at least compared to standard OLEDs. But without that frame of reference, this TV is simply dazzling. Nobody is going to bring this TV home and feel like they want more. Unless, and here's the but, unless, you watch in a fairly bright room. It pains me to say this because I have not been one to harp on OLED as being a poor bright room TV in the past. And here we are with the G2, an extremely bright OLED TV, so you'd think I would be reluctant to cast any doubts around whether or not you'd be anything short of thrilled with this TV. But I had an interesting conversation the other day that lends a little perspective. So sorry in advance, it's not really my style to name drop, but I'm gonna. I was talking to John Rettinger the other day about his next TV purchase. John, who reviews plenty of TVs himself, by the way, currently has the Sony Z90 and he's looking to replace it. He doesn't wanna buy another TV for at least five more years, so he wants to get this purchase right. And he's been waffling between an OLED TV 
or a mini LED TV. We got to talking about the LG G2, and after singing the G2's praises, as I've just done here, and going back and forth a little, I think John was a little surprised that I ended up suggesting he consider some other options. Once I learned about where John's TV is gonna go, when they watch TV, where the windows are in his space, whether they're down to close the blinds every time they watch TV, how often his family watches this TV, and where the lighting is placed in his room, I ultimately figured that the G2 might not be the right option for his specific situation. Now, John may end up getting the G2 anyway. I'll let him tell you all about that. But the process reminded me that while I think the G2 is going to be an amazing option for a huge slice of buyers out there, I can't say enough great things about it. In certain scenarios, I think the move to mini LED could be the smarter call. Of course, if you're chasing after that OLED performance, and you're thinking about mini LED as a substitute for that, you're going to have to pay through the nose, which kind of brings us back to the G2, doesn't it? Anyway, I say all this because perhaps you might be in a similar situation. I reckon there may be fewer of you for whom the G2 is not the best option than there are for whom the G2 is the best option, but that's why we're here, right? To figure that out. Anyway, I can't wait to do some comparisons between the G2 here and Sony's A95K QD OLED, and that's coming, believe me. But, and this is especially true if you want a screen size larger than 65 inches, the G2 is probably going to be the best performing TV for a lot of people. It's right up there at the tippy top of what you can buy in 2022, and objectively and subjectively, it's one of the best TVs I've ever laid eyes on. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think about the G2? You gonna get one? Gonna get a big one? Tell me about that down in the comments. Please consider smashing the like and subscribe buttons. And here's two other videos I think you'll like.